Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Let's open our Bibles to the book of First Corinthians 2.13. Are we there? First Corinthians 2.13. The Bible says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save who? Save the spirit of man which is in him. Yeah? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but who? But who? Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. Praise the Lord. Let's repeat that verse 12. Now we have received, not of the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of who? Of God. Can we look at that very scripture in the Amplified Version? The Bible says, Now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, yeah? but the Holy Spirit who is from God, given to us, that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. Praise the Lord! What that scripture is telling us, that scripture is telling us that there's a spirit that is of the world. Praise the Lord! There is a spirit that controls the world. There's a spirit that leads the children of disobedience. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord. But that is not what we have received of God. The spirit that is in the regenerated you is the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that spirit shows you what has been freely given unto you. Praise the Lord. Recently, I was watching a small clip of... Someone sent me a clip and it was showing some drug called Flaka. And it's like when you take that drug, it, it causes you to be somewhat, it causes you to do weird things. I could see people enter cars like someone just runs and rams into a car. Others will do weird things, very crazy things, very crazy things. But they were under the control of what? Of flaca. Now, we have seen men walk. They go to drinking places. They drink those with things in, in blue papers like this. Eh? And the guy even loses his head and does not understand what is happening. He creates his own world because of that. He just exists in a certain plane which is not of human beings. I think over the ground is usually far because I usually see them walking like... I think maybe the ground becomes so far away over there walking in the space or something. Praise the Lord. I see the way they do things. They don't have balance. They don't have what. But that is just liquor. Someone under the control of liquor. This is another person doing outrageous things. And dressing himself and standing in the public. Because they are under flaca. Have you ever met a mad person? He really doesn't care what is happening around him. He can just be walking. Then he reaches here and stops in the middle of the road like this. And then starts to look around. So it's up to you who's driving the car to know as of whether you want to knock him or pass. Praise the Lord. But they have never been knocked. They have never, you'll never find them in hospitals sick. They have never, they, they just live their own life. Praise the Lord. He can just come stand here and then undress himself and smile. So it's all of you who will be like, that guy has gone crazy. But to his world, He has not gone crazy. To his world, there is something he is servicing. 
He's seeing a certain height and a certain plane from which he's operating from. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So he's not scared to do anything. He's not, he can even get human whatever and eat. What? There is something else that is operating which is beyond his control. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But for us, the Bible tells us that we have received the spirit which is of God. Which is of God. Praise the Lord. The spirit that is working in the inside of you is not a spirit of man. It's not the spirit of this world. It's not a spirit of those drunken people you see. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine that? Now, this one put me to a place to think a certain thing. I was thinking to my head. If those people are functioning like that because there's a certain world that is controlling them, what world do we carry in us because of the Spirit of God in us? What is it that is in a born again Christian? Why? Because that place which you call your body, the Spirit of God says, I reside here, this is my temple. Meaning, when the Spirit wakes up in the morning, He wakes up in you. When He wants to do any deductions, He does them in the inside of you. He has to do in the boundaries of his temple. And that is what the scripture meant when he says that I will live with them. That I will walk in them. That I will dwell in them. The word walk there means perambulating. Which means to patrol the borders of something. To patrol the borders of a property. So it means, the Bible says when you read that scripture. Let's go to, yes. It says what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you are of God, and you are not your own. You're not your own. You're not your own. Meaning, there is something else in the inside of you that has taken influence. You are not just a kind person. You are not just a person who hates sin. You are not just a person who passes and the dead resurrect. You are not just a person who picks up lame people from their bondage. You are not that. There is something that is working itself in the inside of you. That in the very way a madman can undress, for you it is not natural for you to see a dead man. When you hear that someone has died somewhere, there is something that is telling you, no, that is not right, that is not right. Let's go and sort it. Praise the Lord. You don't just do those things. There is something that dwells in the inside of you that wills and does through you. Praise the Lord. Meaning, we are more weird people compared to those ones who are doing flaka and what and what and what. If you are born of God, you cannot be the same. If you have the Spirit of God in the inside of you, you cannot be the same. Let me give you a scenario. Jesus is talking to John. To, to Nicodemus in the book of John 3. And is explaining. The Bible says in John 3, 4. 3, 3. Let's start from there. Jesus answered. Let's start from 2. Let's start from 2 and create a scenario. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. No one can do those things you are doing. You, 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 except God is with you. Praise the Lord. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the realm of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot understand the realm of God. Praise the Lord. The ram. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again. Now, when you study that Hebrew word of be born again, it means genith anothena. What does genith anothena mean? It means you are birthed from above. You are born from above. You are not this ordinary, ordinary, ordinary people. There is something that is at work in the inside of you which is beyond you. Are we together? Now, when Jesus noticed that reality, Jesus was not busy mixing in the common affairs of life. John 8.23 tells us, he was busy telling them, I am from above, but you are from beneath. Why? He knew his identity in God. He knew it. 
And that is how we ought to walk every day. Understanding that there is something else that is at work in the inside of us. Because we are not of this world. We are in it but not of it. Your identity is different. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you one thing. When you get born again as a child of God. It is not like your past is erased and taken away. No. No, 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 no. They lied to us. When you are born again, it's not like the old man is just bound and put at the backyard. Someone will go and get him out any time. When you are born again, it is not like you have a certain past with you, which is just about to show up when you don't pray. When you are born again, it is not as though there is a certain past thing that is just there, waiting for the days when you don't keep up to your spiritual rules. That is bondage. When a man is born again, your past is not erased, your past is not taken away. It is non-existent. That is what the Bible means when it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that if a man, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. A new creature. Why? All things they passed away, they did pass away. They are not part of you, they are not existent. They passed away. Behold, all things are become new. There is no record of you of what your forefather did. There is no record on you of what, of those lineages that you are carrying, that this happened to my uncle, so it must happen to me, no way. When you check that word, Guinness, Guinness has drawn from genes. It means you carry the genes of God in the inside of you. What does that tell me? That tells me when people are busy boasting about their lineages and saying, I was the son of the, of, of, of the, British, of the British king. I was the daughter of the queen. I was that so and so. Of, God is busy dancing and saying, she is of my lineage. She is of my kind. Praise the Lord. We can't carry these things and be the same. We can't carry these things and fashion and function like as if we are of this world. We are not. We are not. Praise the Lord. Now, Jesus tells Nicodemus that except a person be born again, except they cannot see. What was the big issue here? <laughs> the issue here. You remember when Jesus saw, you remember when John saw Jesus? When John saw Jesus, he said, Hey, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Behold. Meaning, John was seeing with a certain kind of perception. Because if it was a normal seeing, then the Pharisees wouldn't have worked so hard to crucify the man of God. They would have seen their salvation. Praise the Lord. Taking away the sins of the world meant that in life we were always living missing the mark. Let me tell you one thing about sin. Sin, you're not a sinner, or not, anyone is not a sinner because they sin a lot. Because I lied yesterday, I'm going to lie again, oh God, I'm sorry. Oh God, then you fornicate. Oh God, I'm sorry. Then you do what? Oh God, I'm sorry. That one does not make you a sinner. People are sinners because of parentage. Parentage. The book of Romans 5.12. <laughs> oh God, where am I going? Just Romans 5.12. I wish I would stick to the topic. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. By one man, everyone became a sinner. By one man, that parentage, there was that parentage. You are not a sinner because you lie every day. One is a sinner because of their parentage. It means, even if someone woke up today and they did good things, good things alone, good things. They gave their lives to be burnt. They did only good things. 
that one does not qualify you. It doesn't qualify you. I'm sorry. There are people that kept the moral character, the Mahatma Gandhis. They lived uprightly. No sin. No sin. But if they never acknowledged Jesus as their Lord and Savior, there is no place for good deeds in heaven. You are not born again by good deeds. If that would have been the issue, Christ wouldn't have died. We would have just had to keep good deeds and we go to heaven. Praise the Lord. Sin is a parentage issue. That is why Jesus looks at this man who wants to be like him. And he's telling him to be where I am. Eh? To be like me. Eh? Something has to happen to your parenting. Except a man be born again. Except a man be born from above. Let me tell you one thing. If we came from above and only descended to take a certain place in this earth, what can defeat you? Papa was saying, when you're feeling low, you're getting tempted. You are getting tempted for real. Why? The Bible says you are seated in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. How can you say, I am low? What do you mean? You are descending to Nicodemus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But by one man righteousness came. You are not righteous because you do good things only. You are not righteous because you didn't steal today, you didn't steal tomorrow. You didn't You are righteous because of parentage. The Bible says that you are a partaker of God's divine nature. You partook of a certain nature. You partook of a certain parentage. Let me tell you one thing. If righteousness was doing good things, good things, and good things, Christ wouldn't have died. We would have learned the pattern of good things and gone to heaven. Praise the Lord. But because it was a deeper issue, when somebody gets born again, something happens to your parenting. There is something that dies and then something else comes. Praise the Lord. What comes? Have you ever asked yourself what comes? What comes is that man from above. He takes over. You can't be in that realm and you're saying... Oh God, I feel low. What do you mean you're feeling low? Oh God, I feel defeated. That is the realm of a certain nature. Oh God, I don't know if this thing will work for me. No way. The Bible says you have the mind of Christ. And you know all things. The Bible says that you carry an unction from the on high. That you know all things. If you carry an anointing from high... On high, that anointing is working in your body, it is working in your marriage, it is working in your finances, it is working everywhere. Guys, the ministry of the Spirit of God in us is not just to sit there and wait when you will preach. No! Every day when you arise, the man of God has a reason in you. Any dimension you decide. You remember what the Bible says. That it is not by might. But it is not by power. But it is by the spirit of God. Might and power have a limit. When the spirit of God takes over. Something different starts to happen. Those are the limitless places. That is what Jesus is telling Nicodemus. That they that are born again. They are like wind. It just bloweth where it listed. Where it listed. Why? They are no boundaries. They are no limitations. Your places of functions have been taken to another dimension. You can never be the same. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you one thing. When we give our lives to Christ, we enter Christ. That is the essence as to why Colossians says that we are in Christ. We are with Christ in God. We enter a certain place called Christ. The psalmist wrote and said that 
he that is, he who dwells in the secret place, the secret place is Christ. If I've entered Christ, I am safe. I have entered the place of rest. I have ceased from all my struggles. There is nothing of my forefathers or who are following me. I am a new creature. What does a new creature mean? It has never existed before. Have you ever seen a creature that when it rises every day it is new? You thought you saw it yesterday in a certain dimension. It rises today, it is new. The Bible says, behold, meaning it is a continuous process of you beholding the newness. The Bible says, his masses are new every morning. Every morning. What does mercy include? Mercy includes that judgment has been lifted. They can't be judgment upon a new creation. So, when you are arising in the morning, you are saying yesterday, oh God, I had a very bad thought. When you are rising in the morning, the Lord says, mercy. It is done. You are free. When you do it, he just says, mercy. Why? Because he sees you in the very way he beholds Christ. The very way he beholds Christ. He has never separated you from the identity of Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But what that one was for who? Praise Jesus. Now, if the issue was parented, then it means everything that is burst comes from a certain source. Yeah? If the Bible says that God is life, in the book of Deuteronomy 30, 20, that God is your life and the length of your days. God, God your life and the length of your days. If the Bible can say that God is life, and the length of your days. And Jesus comes to John 26, 5, 26, and this is what he says. Can we read that? Let's go back and read that. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God, that thou mayest obey his voice, that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life. The Lord God is your life. And the Bible says, and the length of thy days. You people who have put a kamak there, I'll die at 72. But I'll die at 100. The Bible says he is the length of your days. God. How long does God live? If the Lord is the length of your days, then it means that is the length of your ministry. That is the length of everything that comes out of you. Limitless. Generations and generations are ahead are yet to hear of you. Why? For God is the length of your days. What is he telling you? He's telling you, it will be finished with you when it is finished with me. Praise the Lord. Let's go to John 5.26. It says, For as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to do what? To have life in himself. Uh-huh. And has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of God. How many carry the life of Jesus? The Bible says in the book of 1 John 5, 11, And this is the record that God has given us eternal life and that this life is, is, is in his son. That whoever has the son has the life of God. But the very son is the one talking in John 5, 26. Let's go back. He says, For as the father has life in himself, so has he given to the son to have life in himself. So you have life in yourself. Then he says, He has given him authority to execute judgment also. Where the life of God is, there is authority to execute judgment also. What is the matter that is disturbing you? If you know that you carry God in the inside of you, if you know that you carry the life of God in the inside of you, authority to execute judgment has been put in the inside of you. It is in you. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 16 that, that divine sentence is in the lips of a king. Divine sentence. Divine sentence. 
You can wake up in the morning and sentence someone and say from today you will not disturb this nation anymore. It is upon you. Why? If you carry life in the inside of you, you carry the ability to execute judgment. It's there. The Bible says a divine sentence is in the lips of the king. The king, not a king. The king. His mouth transgresses not in judgment. Praise the Lord. So you have been there and you have this witch doctor who is disturbing your doors. Who is busy dancing there and don't Don't just call us. Don't call the pastors. Stand somewhere and execute judgment. Praise the Lord. You have been this having, you've been having these ongoing issues in your family. Don't just cry about them. It's not enough to just cry every day, crying, looking for Pastor Zach, looking for Apostle Emma crying. No. The Bible says if you know you carry the life, you carry the ability to execute judgment. Stand and say, from today, your situation and your situation, you stop in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. You know there can never be a king where there is words follow kings. Not just I'm not talking about these simple words about gossip, slander, what what no. I'm talking about real mature words. They follow kings. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power and there is authority. There is power and there is authority. The Bible again has said that divine sentence is in the lips of the king. Divine. In your mouth there is power. The Bible says, in your mouth there is power and there is what? There is authority. I want you to take me to that scripture in the, in, in the amplified version. It says, for the word of a king, for the word of a king, the word of a king, it is authority and power. Who can say to him, what are you doing? Who? So, if you decide to wake up one day and change the direction of where Kampala looks and flip it outward, no one will ask you, what are you doing? Praise the Lord. This should change our prayer lines. Why? Because we start to understand, the Bible says that we are kings and priests unto God. Kings and priests for the benefit of God. So, what does that tell me? As a king, number one, I'm well aware of my domain. What is my domain? The Bible says that God has given us all things that pertain to this life and this godliness. All things. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 3.22 that all things are yours. This means that you carry a certain place of dominion over everything that exists, over everything. Mention it. Think about it. You carry that authority. Now, what does it mean to be a priest? To be a priest means that by the time I stand to speak unto God pertaining to these matters, I understand, number one, that I am a king. Therefore, I don't enter to places to beg. I have everything. My prayer life starts from a place of thanksgiving because I acknowledge I have everything. If I'm interceding for so and so and so, I start to understand that, oh, they have everything. Now I can pray. We are not beggars in the presence of God. We carry something in the inside of us. Praise the Lord. So when I enter there, I know I am a king. And when I'm interceding as a priest, I know, number one, that I carry authority to execute judgment. What is judgment? When you're there in your house and you're praying in your locked doors, and you're saying, I am the righteousness of God. I am born of God. Greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. I thank you, Father. I am seated. That is great judgment. Why? It is not just judgment for you. It is not just aligning and patterning things for you. Let's read the book of Romans 10:17, and I show you something. Romans 10:17. The Bible says, so then faith cometh by what? By hearing. And by hearing what? Continue. 
But I say, have they not heard? Yes. Verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words into the ends of the world. Let's go back to 18. Their words went into the... Their sound. When sound comes in, it creates distinction. So, when you're in your house and you're saying, I am the righteousness of God. I am born of God. Greater is he that is in me than the one that is in the world. I am a well-watered garden. I am a tree that is planted by the water. When I'm saying that, I'm not saying it for myself. My words are going all throughout the world. All to the ends of the world. To every place that God has called you to influence, they go there. That is why one day you wake up, you want to do a multi-billion crusade, and you find everything has been put in order for you. Praise the Lord. Apostle Grace did not just wake up in the morning and do this to Nero. No. He meditated you to this place. But his meditations, when he was there and saying, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, thank you Lord, he was aligning a particular seed, a particular kind, a particular breed. That's why you're here. Praise the Lord. So, when I'm locked up in my room and I'm saying, Father, I thank you. I am born of God. I thank you for my children. I, th- I am speaking for the entire world. Literally, at that moment, the entire world is arrested to what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. That is why the Bible says, you are the light of the world. Not the light of Uma Showground. The Bible says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Because every time you say those words, you're executing judgment, you are aligning your path, you're influencing nations. When you come out, you know that indeed the word of God is working. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Let us look. Let us look at Psalms 145. Psalms 145. 15 and 16. The Bible says, the eyes of the Lord, they do what? The the eyes of all do what? Yes. And thou givest them what? I want you to read that very carefully. The Bible says, the eyes of all wait upon thee. And thou givest them what? They are meat in in due season. Verse 16. Thou openest thine hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Praise the Lord. What is in the hands of God? Do you know what is in the hands of God? The Bible says that you have been held in the hands of God. You cannot be plucked. But he says, when these very hands are opened, the desires of the nations has come. When he opens his hands, he satisfies the desire of every living thing. That is what God thinks about you. When he sees you, he thinks about every living thing. He's not thinking about your village. He's not thinking about Uganda. He's thinking about every living thing. But you find Christians there, they are asking for small things. God, give me a house. Can I please have a house? Can I have a house? When the whole world has opened out his hands. He says, you shall lend to nations. Why? Because it is you that is the desire of the nations. You don't just lend to them because you have money. No. There is something that they must feed of you. There is something about you that must go to the ends of the earth. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. You find someone saying, Tata. 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 God is like Wanji. Tata. 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 God has called you to glory and virtue. 
The Bible says in the book of Thessalonians that he has called you to obtain glory. A person who has obtained glory, a person who is walking in the pattern of glory and virtue, is not thinking about what to eat tomorrow. Their minds and their palpitations when they are seated, they are thinking, oh God, what do nations want to feed? What do they want to eat today? And you give them meat, not bread, not meat in their due season, meat. You give them the depths of the riches of the word of God. That is why there were those days when men, when a woman walked from the south, she came all the way to see a wise man. She came and she was blown away. Solomon. And the Bible says in the book of Matthew twelve forty two that she shall judge this generation. Why? Because in you is Christ Jesus. Now, if Christ Jesus is in you, that is the essence as to why the Bible was saying that kings shall come to thy rising and Gentiles to thy light. Why? Because in you is a greater wisdom. A mother of all wisdoms. Wisdoms beyond. Praise the Lord. I learned one thing of my father. You know that scripture which says Ephesians 3 9? Ephesians 3 9. Yes, KJV. It says, And to make all men see what is the first mystery. And from the beginning of the world, he had been he who created all things by Christ Jesus. Uh huh. To the intent that now principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. I learned this. That principalities only hear wisdom. You can pray, fast, break, do what? Go where? Climb mountains, come down, go here. Go here. But unless there is that wisdom of God in the inside of you, principalities will never bow. But now, the greater one dwells in the inside of you. The Bible says that you have the mind of Christ. The Bible says that Christ has become unto you wisdom. 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 What does that tell you? You're going to see kings coming. Why? They want to understand your phronesis. They want to understand how can he be like that? Kings, not local, local, local. Kings. Kings by default are wise people. But by the time the wisest ones are looking for you, that means there is a certain functioning of wisdom that is not of this world. That is what you carry, the wisdom of Christ. He has embodied himself in the inside of you. He has tabernacled himself in you. What does that mean? It is wrong for you to ask for what you have. Saying, God, help. Help what? The wisdom of God is in you. The power to execute is in the inside of you. Jesus looks at a fig tree which cannot produce a fig and he executes judgment. Why? Because it was not in the pattern of trees at that point when Jesus needed to eat, not to provide. It had to provide. Why? Because all things must respond to you. When you turn to them, they must respond. When you go to your ATM and you want money, whether you left money or you didn't leave money, it must respond. When the doctor says, oh, we are sorry, you seem to be barren, you will never produce child. Touch that womb of yours. It must respond. When you go somewhere and they're telling you, oh, your husband is busy doing this and this and this and this. Speak something. He will respond. Guys, you guys don't need counseling. I promise you, you don't. Why? Because you already carry the depth of the word of God. You carry the life of God in you. You don't need any counseling. Why? 
The Holy Spirit in the inside of you is the counselor. He's in you. What is he waiting? He's just waiting for that that you will say that it may be accomplished. But how much, how many times we forsake that and we start to look for pastors? We are like, no, if I don't talk to Pastor Modista, this demon is not going to go. You don't need me. Everything you need is in the inside of you. It is in the inside of you. What we do here, we just show you who you are. Because you are written epistles that are known and are read of all men. All men. All men. The Bible says that you are our written epistle in our hearts. Known and read of all men. Can you imagine you are known and read of all men? Known and read of all men. It is small to tell God you need a church of 20 members. He says you are read by all men. All men. Is the Spirit of God in Asia? Is He in Asia? Is the Spirit of God in Asia? Is the Spirit of God in Africa? Is God in Europe? Is God in Australia? So, you are telling me by your own words that God is everywhere. Yeah? You are everywhere. That is the place that Jesus prayed for you when he said, And where I shall be that they may be also. You are everywhere. It is upon you to determine how you want to appear that everywhere. But you are everywhere. Why? The Bible says that he that is joined with the Spirit of God is one what? One Spirit with him. How can the Spirit... You say God called you for Uganda only. How? If the Spirit of God is everywhere. The Bible says that this knowledge shall cover the earthly plain like waters the sea. But this very knowledge, the Bible says that you make a server of it in every place, wherever you go. Even right now when you just choose to sit down, people are seeing the knowledge of God. When you walk out of this place, people are seeing the knowledge of God. Do you know what the word server means? It means fragrance. In every place that I choose to move, people are smelling God. They are like, hmm. People start to hunger and burn for God. That is why the Bible says, you are the salt of the world. What does salt do? Salt creates hunger, thirst. It is good for us to cry and say, God, change this nation. God, change this people. God, touch so and so. Go there. And you know how to go there because you're already there by Christ. If you're there, they should automatically burn with a hunger for God. They should say, God, we need you. God, we want you. I was reading of a certain story of Charles G. Finney. He appeared somewhere and the whole village came to receive Christ. What was on that guy? If not that understanding. He knew it. John Gillette passes with a plane somewhere. And just by the virtue of him passing, the whole nation is cured. Passing. Like this. But we are still here telling God, God, I need a mobile phone. The mobile phone is not the desire for the nation. Guys, what you carry in the inside of you, what you must see by the eyes of the Spirit, is what the nations need, not the mobile phone. And we have been doing, we got an opportunity to do a lecture with one of the most renowned professors from Malaysia. And she gave us a very clear understanding of nations. You know what I thought? I thought that nations are demarcations. eh? Like you cut... Even the ground is cut. Like, you know, I, I cross borders a lot. So I thought, oh, so now I've crossed to another nation. Then I cross to another nation. No. A nation is a group of people that believe in a certain way. You are a funeral nation. Because there is something. You believe you can't die. 
You believe you can't be poor. You believe you're called for global impact. Because you believe you are above only and never below. You share the same values. You share the same belief systems. Praise the Lord. It is good to say you are Kenyan. It is good to say you are Ugandan. It's good to say you are Australian. It's good to say you are Caucasian. It's very good to say all things. But all those things were only opportunities that God gave you to stand and see the entire world. That you may go and take. Take up the world for Jesus. Abraham was driven to a land called Canaan. And all of you know Canaan means a lowly place. He reached there, stood there, but he saw the entire world. The Bible says he became an heir of the whole world. Why? That was his boundary. That was his place of habitation to scan what must be of the whole world. And when he saw the whole world, he said, that is mine. And he walked in it. Same with you. You're not just a Ugandan putting yourself as a third class African country. Um, um, I come from Uganda. You know we are poor. No, you're not. Do not conform yourself to the systems of this world. Do not conform yourself to the standards of this world. It is not true that you're poor. It is not true. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. New creations don't know poverty because it has never existed to them. It is not a place you keep visiting and you keep saying, Bambi, we are poor. God, make me rich. No wonder God has never answered you and he will never answer. Why? There is a language for kings. And let me tell you one thing. That is the language angels understand. That is the language God understands. When a king starts, stands to speak something, angels get of those words and they run to execute that matter. They execute by the force of the word of God. Not by your negative imaginations. And say, oh I wish, I wish I will just go to, I wish I will just go to the United States. Oh, I wish I will just drive that car. I wish I will just, they don't execute by that. But by the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to show us a scripture here. My God, these phones of nowadays. Yes. I want us to look at Ephesians 4 verse 6. Ephesians 4 verse 6. The Bible says, can we start from 5, then maybe get the picture? 4. The Bible says, there is one body eh? and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, mm-hmm. one God and Father of all. Who is what? Above all. And who is what? Through all. And who is what? In you all. In you all. He is above all. Above all. God is reminding you of the picture of the Anathena. You are above all. You relate from the place of above all. There is nothing of you that is of this plan. You only took an earthly body to execute what must be executed in the earthly plane. Bodies are only understood in the earthly plane. In the spiritual realm, bodies are not understood. Praise the Lord. But it says, one father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. What is it that God can do through you by His virtue that being in you? What is it? Because the Bible says, through you all. Now, such a person cannot sit down and wonder what they are supposed to do. No. The very God that created everything that exists, He says, Through you all. Through you. Through. Means if he needs to do anything, he's looking at you. 
Why? Because even in this earthly plane, God cannot come by spirit. He came by you. That was the experience of above. Born from above. Praise the Lord. Let me show you another scripture. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 6. It says, But to us, there is but who? And who? The Father of whom are all things. Pause the minute and somebody speak in tongues and just think about all things. He says, but to us there is but one God, the Father, whom are all things, and we in Him. We in Him. And one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things. Oh God. I can't read this scripture and stay in home. I can't imagine you're also just looking at me like your eyes blinking. I can't imagine. Let me read again. Let's go slowly. It says, but to us, there is but who? The Father, yeah? Of whom are all things. And we, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are, and we, you didn't get it. Let's read it again. But to us, there is what? The Father. One God the Father, yeah? Of whom are and we and one by whom are and we Guys, if you understand what meditation is, that scripture can blow your mind. Why? Because God is busy giving you a certain pattern of the imaginative process that creates When you read that scripture once, twice, three times, you will notice that everything that must be or will be exists and will come by you. By you. By you. It means if there has to be a certain government or governments that must transform the face of Africa, they must come by you. By you. By you. There is a working of God in the inside to produce a manifestation of Christ Jesus in the outward. Every form of creation processes, they go on in the inside of you. What men see are but a product of what is happening in you. You say, I have a backache. No, it came because of your imaginative by you. By you. It just didn't come. By you. Why? Because the imagination makes you walk in the spirit realm. That is why, if you are born again, your imagination is anointed. You can't just be there and sit and you're thinking, Oh God, I think I'm broke. Oh God, I think I'm mad. The moment you think that, you're only thinking that because you are contacting that in the spirit realm. That is what you're contacting at that moment. When you feel a backache back and say, Oh God, my back is hurting. Oh God, my back is hurting. You are contacting that in the spirit realm. What does that tell us? It tells us there is a pattern into which we meditate. By the word. By the word. By the word. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God works in you by the word. He starts to reveal things you have not even known before. And it is wrong if that thing works in the children of men and not in us. It is wrong. It is wrong for you to wake up and say, Oh God, oh why am I ever broke? Immediately that thing comes in out of your mouth. It means you already walked that place. You finished the whole broke region. Eh? You walked all of it. You cleared it and now you are confessing that, Wow God, I don't know why I am broke. Why the, what does that teach us? That teaches us to quickly learn to respond to situations. Why? If I feel a pain in my back, 
Someone taught me that Modesta, immediately you feel a pain in the back, just say, Holy Ghost, I thank you for massaging me. Woo. I have entered into that realm. Immediately I feel a headache. I say, Holy Ghost, you're too much in my head. Oh God, you're too much now. You're too much. I receive the anointing. You slain yourself. And you fall down. And you wake up deep. Praise the Lord. It is how you quickly learn to respond to the situation. Not according to the patterns of this world. Not according to the conformations of this world. But according to the mind of God. When you check your account and it's saying zero balance and that cashier has come out. Take a pen. Put thousand zeros ahead of that zero. Pile the zeros. And walk out rich. Not going back to your wife and saying, Ah, you know I checked the account. We have nothing. You have walked in the world of nothingness. You have surveyed that land and you have possessed it as yours. So you are just confessing. Why? The Bible says, for as we have believed, we thus speak. We confess the things that we have deeply believed. You are not just a negative speaker. No, those are the things you have deeply believed. Deeply. As we have believed. The Bible says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. You're saying, oh you don't understand. This pain is too much. You believed. You believed. Why? Because when the pain came to you, the pain only came as a trick. It only came as the wile of the devil. It only came to help you enter that world. And because it entered, you say, oh, this stomach has been paying three days constantly. This is ulcer. You have entered the world of ulcer. You have surveilled the whole world and said, ulcer is mine. I receive it. I take it. Then by your mouth, when the devil notices it has entered you, he will help your doctor to confirm it. The doctor says, I see your stomach has wounds. These wounds have been there for quite a while. I think this is abdominal ulcer. So we, we, we shall put you on this drug. And you go home with that report. Guys, this is what I do when I wake up every morning. I step down on my bed. When I step on the ground, I'm saying the Holy Ghost has stepped down. What's next? What next? By the way, let me tell you one thing. When I'm walking in these streets of Kampala, I walk with this mind. I'm like, God, I thank you for billion dollars, million dollars. Oh God, I thank you. I always carry an expectation that something way beyond human imagination is about to happen. Praise the Lord. Do you remember that scripture? I learned this from one of my papas. Do you remember that scripture where Jesus is talking and is saying that if this body, I can break this body and build it back in three days. Do you remember that scripture? It should be Luke. Um, please get it for me. I want, I want the exact. There's something there I want to show you. Let me get it. Yes, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Uh huh. And he said, Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will thou rear it up in three days? What was Jesus meaning? Jesus meant that if this body be broken in only three days, I will enter that certain place. I will cause you that is born again to enter a certain place. Once I'm resurrected, what men do in three days, you will do in 46 years. What men do in 46 years, you will do in three days. Sorry. Let me repeat that again. What it meant is that when I'm lifted, because the Bible says when he died, we died with him. When he resurrected, we resurrected with him to the newness of life. 
And he was saying, if I'm seated there, where you are seated, where you and I dwell right now, what men take 46 years meditating to do, you can do it in three days. What do you know that a man has worked so hard to get for 46 years? You can do it in a minute. Why? The rules changed. They built those things up in human effort. But it says, in me, you entered labors where which you worked not. You labored not. You labored not. Praise the Lord. What takes men 20 years to do, you will do in a day. What takes men a lot of saving? You know there are people who save. Eh? They save and save and save. And even after like five years, they have like, oh, how much? I don't even want it. It's annoying. It's not of where we belong. And that is what they have. But God says, even that that they have saved for, lo saved for long ages to get, you can get it in a minute because you are walking in a certain pattern of the resurrected Lord. Praise the Lord. That one liberates us from a lot of things. You don't know how many. Why? Because we were brought up to think that we must always work hard for things. Is working hard bad? Working hard is very good. But we have mastered in this ministry that we work hard in the rest of God. We work hard in the places where God has already made it available for us. So, me working and working, don't see me and say, Ah, you see, she's busy waking up at 9 a.m. and she told us that we are just supposed to be sleeping. No, 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 no. Our labors are in, we, 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 we work in the rest. Why? Because we seized from our own struggles. We seized long ago. When we entered Christ, we found a certain place of rest. All things work together for our good. All things. What do I mean all things? Even the devil and his cohorts. They are working together, aligning themselves. Working together for your good. For your good. There is nothing that the devil can do that will take you out of the will of God. The devil many times without knowing, he patterns himself to the mind of God. He doesn't know. Look at Joseph. Joseph would have said, Ivanang, the devil is now very serious. I've been put in the dungeon. Now I'm, I'm, I'm being buried. Now I'm taken to prison. Now I'm being covered here. Now they're lying to my father. He will say that. But in all that, in the working of the devil, the will of God was aligning itself. So it doesn't matter. You can say right now, they have fired me. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to get money. I don't know where to go. But in your firing is your promotion. Maybe you had been in that place for so long that God did everything possible to show you that it is time to go and you are not going. So the boss has helped you. You're crying. Yeah, you cry. You are in a relationship with a dude. And then he just says, from today this relationship is over. My God, my God. You can't be there and you're saying, God, oh God, what did I do? No, 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 no. All things are working for your good. Sometimes you just never know what God is delivering you from. <laughs> I was told of a story of a certain Muslim woman who prays from the toilet. She married a Muslim woman, man knowing he was Muslim, but he kept, she kept saying, he will change in Jesus' name. He will change in Jesus' name. He will change 10 years, 20. He will change in Jesus' name. Now the only place she can have secure fellowship is inside the toilet. Why? Because if she comes out, the man is ready with a panga, with a machete. He told her, I will put your head off if I ever hear Jesus in my house. And every Friday I want you in a bui bui to the mosque. Praise the Lord. So, sometimes you just never know what God is getting you out of. All things are working together for your good. For your good. Can I show you that scripture in the Amplified Version? You show us in the Amplified Version. 
it said, and we are assured and know that God being a partner in their labor. Can you imagine? God being a partner in their labor. All things work together and are fitting into plan for good to those and for those who love God and are called according to His design and purpose. Everything that comes your way only comes to fashion you for greatness. You remember what Jesus told them. Jesus told them, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Take me to that scripture, John 16, 33. John 16, 33. It says, these things have I spoken, yeah? Unto you, that in me you might have what? Peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amplified. It says, I have told you these things. Let's read together. So that in me, you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you will have tribulations and trials and distress and frustration. But be of good cheer. Take courage. Be confident. Certain. And don't have. For I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and conquered it for you. Praise the Lord. He said, I have overcome the world. He says, I have deprived it. I have deprived, I've deprived it of power to harm you. There is nothing that can harm you. All things are patterning themselves together for your good, for your good, for your good, for your good. Why? The Bible says you are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Anybody from above is created in Christ Jesus. You are a pattern of good works. The whole of your life, God has intended that it is a pattern of great works. There is nothing that is too overwhelming that has been born yet that can overcome you. It is impossible. Why? The Bible says that they that are born of God overcome the world. They have overcome the world. You overcame. Jesus said, I deprived it of power to harm you. I deprived the world of power. You're saying, oh no, they have told me I have cancer. This cancer can kill me. He says, I have deprived cancer the power to kill you. You say, oh no, I'm so scared. You know, my husband beats me in the night. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I might die. He says, I have deprived that thing that causes your husband to beat you. I've deprived it of power to kill you or to harm you. You say, I'm suffering everyday death. He says, I have deprived it of power to harm you. So what do you do? You are of good cheer every day. When you wake up in the morning, you give glory to God. You thank God. Praise the Lord. You say, God, I thank you. Regardless of the circumstance or situation, you choose to put a smile. You wake up and say, God, regardless of what I'm seeing in the east or what I'm seeing in the west, I have this undaunted faith that all things are working together for my good. And you start to dance. Learn to dance in your houses. Some of you, even your chairs, know you are very dull people. Even when you sit on them, they just break because they don't see any need anymore. Guys, learn to create an atmosphere in your house that regardless of what happens, that atmosphere stays. Praise the Lord. You know what I do? In the morning, just after I've showered and done my thing, I just put music, chejo, just mine. And I just took Teremuka Mpaka Wansi, I Kirira. I just do my thing. I just tell Jesus, you know what? Now this is for you. And I just go, you know? I give it to him. After that, I switch off my radio and I just start to laugh. I'm like, ho, ho, my God, I am blessed. Eh? <laughs> By the time I am done, even the devil knows he can't look at my face. He knows it. Why? The Bible says that your wisdom is what makes your face to shine. Ecclesiastes 8, 1, I think. The wisdom that you carry in the inside of you is what makes your face to shine. It says, 
Who is the wise man? And who knows the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine. And the boldness of his face shall be changed. Can you imagine that? When I'm waking up in the morning and I know that I know there are even worse things to face, I just start to say, God, I thank you. I thank you, Lord my God. I am full of joy. The Spirit of God is in the inside of me. I know the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same power at work in the inside of me. Therefore, I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. The more I do that, my face begins to shine. Because that is the wisdom of God. And boy, you don't want to know how tribulation heads shining faces. Why? Because everything comes to conform you into what they are. The landlord knocks for you to say, Banange. But when he knocks, open it and say, Power of the Holy Ghost. The anointing of God is shining on you. You have no time to cry. When he stands up and he still is in the anointing, he will ask you, which church do you go to? Which God do you serve? Let me tell you, the things of this world can never understand that glory. It is very important what happens to your face, to your countenance. Can I show you a scripture? Lamentations 5. Lamentations 5, around 22. Let's go upward. It says, Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be what? Renew our days as of old. Uh huh. But thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. Uh huh. Is that the last one? I have another bigger Bible here. We never fail. Yes, it's there. Uh-huh. Can we go up? Ah. The Bible says the elders have ceased from the guest and the young men from their music. Music. First see the way they have written that. <laughs> Sounds like some tribe from Kenya, you know, they say music. 15. The joy of our heart is seized. Our dancing turned into mourning. Eh? The crown is fallen off from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. Uh-huh. For our heart is faint. For these things our eyes are dim. Uh-huh. Yes. Now I want us to go to 15 there. The Bible says, The joy of our heart is seized. Our dance is... When the joy of your heart is seized, your dancing is turned into what? Mourning. Because the joy is seized. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Meaning you have no strength. The joy of the heart has been seized. Yes, number 16? 16. The crown is... When the joy of your heart ceases, the crown is fallen from your head. Your glory. Your glory. That thing that preserves you. Why? Because you no longer have the joy of the Lord that is your strength. You don't have it. Then, 17 says, For this our heart is faint, and for this our eyes are dim. The joy of the Lord is taken away. Your heart has ceased. Your mourning has been put into dance. Now it says, The joy of your heart has ceased. Man, take me to 17. I don't like... Okay. For this, our heart is faint. For these things, our... It means when your heart has ceased, your dance has gone off, your eyes are dim. You can't see. Why can't you see? You cannot see the great things that God is doing all around you. Why? The joy was taken away. Your dancing has been turned into mourning. Your crown has fallen off. So, what does that merry heart do? The Bible says that merry heart gives you a continual feast. You want to see feast upon feasts in your life? That merry heart in you. In you. 
Why? Because when your heart is sunken down, the Bible says your eyes are dimmed. You can't see. God is busy doing great things around you, but you can't see. You cannot rehearse like David in Psalm 42. You can't rehearse of good things because in your heart you're like, Oh God, what did I do wrong? 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 Why are things always like this? Why? Oh God, why? Your joy has ceased. When it ceased, your crown is down. When your crown is down, your eyes cannot see the goodness of the Lord. Guys, regardless of what is happening in your life right now, there is so many other good things around you. There are so many other good things around you. When your eyes are dim because of frustrations and tribulations, you cannot see the wells of opportunity. You can't see them. You can't see them. Her guys caught up crying and saying, now you have left us here to die. But the water was right next to her. She couldn't see. The reason as to why the Spirit of God is working in the inside of us, it's because when a desert comes, he becomes the river that flows in that desert. When any hard circumstance comes upon your life, the Spirit of God takes over. He raises a certain standard. There is nothing, child of God, that can overwhelm you. It has never been fashioned yet. There is nothing. You're saying, but now I'm overwhelmed. You are not yet. Unless you agree and take your imaginative process to walk in that. Because it's a world. It's a world you enter. And agree with it. I'm saying now, from today... I am a failure. Oh God, no wonder this thing has been happening like this. Hey, because I'm a failure. Hey. You are agreeing with something you don't understand. You have come so low to mix yourself with the rudiments of the world. To pattern yourself with the elements of the world. To take a direction that is not even yours. Guys, you have entered Christ. Do you know who Christ is? That is where you are. The Bible says in the book of Colossians that you are in Christ. You are with Christ in God. With Christ in God. Deep inside there. That is a whole new atmosphere. The Bible calls it a secret place. What happens there? No person not born of God knows. So, we can't live our lives like they live. We have been called for greater things. We have been called for greater purposes. Praise the Lord. They didn't tell me I'm beyond time. Yes. We have been called for greater what? For greater things. Praise the Lord. I want, us to, show, I want to show us this last scripture and then we pray. I'm way beyond time. I'm even shocked. I'm seeing from my clock here. Yes. Thank God. You know, there are some ministries we used to go and, and preach. Eh? Actually, it was not even a ministry. Those days when we were still in campus, we are hmm, upcoming believers. Eh? You are there, you are, you, 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 you are in a hostel. So you are there, then that day the mama thinks maybe you can preach. So they give you the katut. Then, when you just enter the tenth minute, a cannot comes. And they cannot say, 10 minutes to time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> but Fanir is the place of the word. Praise Jesus. We are of the word. Praise the Lord. We can sit here until morning. I think we are not blinking. Me, yeah, I know these people. I've ever tried them. Praise the Lord. So, uh, I'd like to show us a certain scripture in the book of Second Peter. One nine and then we, we call it a wrap. People have to travel. People are going to Nairobi. I'm really sorry to keep you waiting. For those who had booked buses, please go. The last bus is leaving exactly at nine. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't intend. I actually thought I was. Okay, the Bible says in the book of First Peter 2. Are we there? 
1 Peter 2 verse 9. As we wind up. The Bible says, but you are a chosen generation. And a what? A royal priesthood. An holy nation. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Bible says, which in time past were not a people, are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now you have obtained mercy. Not only have you obtained mercy, the Bible says, you have obtained the glory of God. You have been called to obtain the glory of God. Praise the Lord. When Jesus was praying in the book of John 17, he says, my glory I have given unto them. You carry the glory of God in the inside of you. Praise the Lord. You are the man from above. The situations of this world mean nothing to you. They only mean something by the attention you give unto them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us stand up and pray. Let us pray. The Bible says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were a people, but are now the people of God. You are the people of God. Praise the Lord. You were born from above. When you show up, every situation and circumstance that is hard and is not of this world makes a way. That is why I know that we are going to take the top places of this world we are going to influence all the spheres you can ever imagine. Why? We are born from above. We are not of this world. Praise the Lord. I like us to pray right now. Come on, somebody, let's pray. Somebody just lift your hands to Jesus and start to pray. Start to pray in the understanding of who you are. my father we thank you that we are from above we thank you that everything beneath responds to us in the mighty name of Jesus the systems of this world they, they respond to us in the mighty name of Jesus because we are above and not below we are anointed we carry the power of the Holy Ghost in the inside of us the same power that raised Christ from the dead is in the inside of us oh he is in our legs oh he is in our bones oh he is in, he is in our bodies he is all over us in the mighty name of Jesus Father I thank you Lord my God that we influence we influence in the mighty name of Jesus we influence in the mighty name of Jesus Jesus. Every corner of this world has heard about us. Every corner of this world and beyond, they know about us. For we are written epistles that are known and they are read of all men. Come on, somebody. Somebody just take one minute in prayer. I see things aligning for your favor. There are to the word of truth because you are born of the word of God you are born of God you overcome the word you are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus now thanks be unto God who always causes you to triumph you triumph in every place you triumph in the mighty name of Jesus Mindsets are breaking. Let's break it. 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 Let's break it.
The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.